And this is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly right here on WVOF. And we've been listening right now to a uh, selection from Vital Information, Show Them Where You Live. And that was Cranial Number 3, Asul. And the man who is uh, leading this band, terrific ensemble, Tom Coster on the keys, Baron Brown on bass, Frank Gambali on guitar, and of course, Steve Smith on drums. And uh, one of the most versatile and and talented musicians around. He's been a uh, friend here to The Up Room with Joe Kelly, and he's currently on tour with Vital Information, and we're going to welcome once again to The Up Room with Joe Kelly, Mr. Steve Smith. How you doing, Steve? Good, Joe. Nice to talk to you again. Coming through loud and clear? Good. Yeah, I hear you. You hear me okay here? Perfect, and, and I'll let you know we moved into new studios uh, last week, and you are the first interview via phone, so it's coming through real nice. we got a nice studio here. Great. Well, congratulations on the new studio. That's exciting. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah. you, this this is um, one of your rare off days, right, before you get back in the tour. Yeah, well, we, we're currently on tour right now, but yeah, we, do, we don't have to play tonight. We're in Washington, D.C. and have a night off. So it's actually a very nice city to have a night off. And turns out Santana's playing in town tonight, so we're talking to Dennis Chambers and Benny Riefeld and, and the guys, and might go down to see them tonight. Well, did you hear what happened last night in D.C.? No, what happened last night? Well, well, Prince was in town at the Warner Theater, and oh, Dennis uh, told me Prince he saw Prince last night. Yeah, and Carlos Santana jumped on stage to do a couple numbers. Oh, right. Okay, so that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, I yeah, don't know. Dennis if... was, he he enjoyed it. He he thought it was a great show. He had a good time. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. you know, you're, you've are got a, a great band. Everybody's still intact or some new additions with uh, Vital Information? Uh, no, it's the, it's the same group that we've had for at least three years now, you know, going three to three and a half years with Baron Brown on bass and um, Tom Coster on the keyboards and Frank and Bali on the guitar. And Frank and Tom have been with me about 15 years now, really quite a long time. And uh, and Barron's the the newest member, but even you know he's been in the band over three years now. So with uh, your extensive catalog, I mean, er- every time I look, there's a new CD coming coming out with yourself somehow in it. Um, it, it, it seems that way. Yeah. It seems that way. How how do you go about finding a new project as far as what what you're going to uh, be creative on? How how does that usually uh, evolve? <laughs> well, it de- it depends when. When it comes to the CDs that I do for the Tone Center record label, the president of that company, Mike Varney, he's constantly on my case to think of projects and try to put them together and produce them. So I've actually thought of and attempted to put together even more than, than actually has happened because... Some of them don't always pan out because of people's availability or willingness to to want to do a particular project. But but I just I fantasize of like players that I want to work with this guy. I'd like to work with this guy, and and then he just said, okay, let's just go for it. So you know, it started off I don't know how many years ago now, like about three years ago, I think, when he first came up with the idea of a high energy fusion project and he said, you know, who who what two guys would you really want to play with? And I said, Oh how about Scott Henderson and Victor Wooten? Wow. Just sort of joking and he goes, Call him up, let's make it happen. So so I did and it happened and that actually is what started the the Tone Center record company. Because once we completed that record and he was gonna put it out on Shrapnel Records, the three of us really objected. <laughs> Because shrapnel is more of a heavy metal connotation. You know, if you know the artist right. on that label, it's more heavy metal. So we said, you know, that's not going to work. So then he says, well, I, I've been thinking of starting a fusion label. Maybe let's let's do it with this. So as soon as that was done, then he said, okay, now that I have my fusion label, I need more records. So that's when I put together the record with Frank Gambale and Stu Ham and Tom Coster and and uh, Larry Coriel and and the Buddies Buddies, and just kept going from there with The Stranger's Hand with Jerry Goodman and Howard Levy, O'Teal Burbridge. I just started 
trying to think of all these combinations. So. And then some of them did so well, we ended up doing a second record. Like, we did a ZTT2, Vital Tectones 2, with Scott and Victor, and then we did another one with Stu and Frank. And actually, we have a third one with Stu and Frank in the can that's going to come out probably in the summer or something like that. We call it GHS3. It's just really a pretty, pretty nice new record that includes some new directions because we have Frank Gambale playing acoustic guitar on some of it. So, but oh, okay. still high energy, but we're using the acoustic guitar with the drums and bass, which is pretty nice. And then, uh, oh, then we did the one with Larry Coriel and Kai Eckhart, Steve Marcus right. called Count's Jam Band. And you got everybody together, the reunion. Yeah, yeah right. So, so it just, yeah, we just and keep thinking of these projects. And then with this new Vital Information record, my intuition record company that i'm signed to in europe ha has been putting out the records but the new vital information record show them where you live what you just played from is going to come out on tone center uh here in in the u.s he, he bought the rights for the u.s so it will be on tone center coming out april 9th which is uh the next week coming up next tuesday wow so people uh, can go to your website for vitalinformation.com, and there's uh, information on the tour, which Steve Smith is currently uh, underway with his, with his friends touring right now and also ordering information in the discography and and um, go there right now. There. Yeah. yeah, it's all there. And, and then, and then there's, there are still other projects that come up by people calling me. So there there's a band that we call Summit that's a new group of people that we have an album coming out in the fall and also a tour in the fall and that came about with a saxophone player named george brooks who wrote all this music of indian it's indian style music and western mixture and so this group has kayak out on bass farid hawk on guitar and zakir hussein on tabla and myself on drums. So this is a record that we've already done and we'll be out touring in the fall. So that's going to be pretty fun, pretty different. So for any of the projects you get with such a, a diverse uh, array of musicians, are, are there any projects that have happened that it, as a drummer took you a while to, to get into it? or Well, there... these, the, especially the Indian music. I did a tour last year with a tabla player from Calcutta named Sandeep Burman. Oh, wow. We and missed that one. On, yeah. Yeah, on that tour, we actually used, sort of the core group was The Stranger's Hand. It was Jerry Goodman on violin, Howard Levy on harmonica and keyboards. We had Victor Bailey on bass and Randy Brecker on trumpet, and I played drums, and, and uh, then Sandeep played tabla. And this music was very difficult for all of us because of the nature of the Indian music having so so many unfamiliar um, rules, for lack of a better word, or just concepts. Uh, most of it was in odd times, and really odd times. Like, for example, one of the tunes was in five and a quarter, which I didn't even know what that meant. But, <laughs> but once he figured, he explained it to me, it's, it's in 21... 16. So that's not something that you play every day. Or a tune in eight and a half, which is another way of saying 17, eight. Because <laughs> he gets the 16 and then he adds an extra beat. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's eight, uh, you know, 17. And then there was just, you know, you're, the simple ones were like in five or seven. So, so that was hard. And then all the rhythmic motifs that, that you have to learn to play the music was difficult. So that was hard. But but I learned a lot doing it, which in turn set me up to then play with uh, Zakir Hussein, who I've done a little recording with, but um, nothing where it was Indian music. He was just playing on a project I was involved with called Yo Miles. That's a, it's a project that's the Miles Davis music of the 70s, the electric Miles. And he came in and played on some tracks, but it, so it wasn't me going to his turf, <laughs> which is a whole other world. <laughs> So, uh, so it, that that's the hardest so far for me. This is that. So, and, but I'm really interested in it because it's rhythmically so advanced. 
And if you just tuned in, my special guest this afternoon is Steve Smith, a uh, very accomplished drummer and uh, just all sorts of group. Also, uh, with Journey, um, maybe we'll talk a little bit uh, about Journey and also uh, Vital Information, his group. He's currently on tour. And let me give the folks some of the dates. Tomorrow night you'll be, and you're in D.C. right now, but you are going to be playing at the Blues Alley. And right. And uh, making the trek up to New York City in Greenwich Village, NYU area, West 4th Street. At the bottom line, you played there several times, right? Sure, we played yeah. there a lot, yeah. And then uh, Friday evening. That's on the 4th. We're going to play there. Right, this Thursday. And then uh, Friday, I have you. You're going to be in Huntington, New York at the IMAC Theater. Right. And uh, moving back. along. Yeah, Saturday night, uh, you're going to be in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania at Wilkes Barre at Murray's Inn. Two shows that night, 9 and 11 p.m., also appearing in the Dave Liebman Group. And then you're coming to Connecticut on yep. Tuesday, April 9th at 7.30 p.m. at the Colony in Vernon, Connecticut. Let me give the folks the number right now before uh, we get moving along. 860-647-8887. That's vital information at the Colony in Vernon, Connecticut. And then Wednesday at the Iron Horse, Northampton. And then uh, you're going to be moving along to some drum clinics at Western Connecticut State University on the 13th. So, wow, you've got a busy schedule. It's busy, yeah. And if they want more details, like you mentioned, it's all at Vital Information dot com okay you can get all the all the gory details of every gig right and and let me catch my breath after that <laughs> so, <laughs> so why don't we get into a, a track right now and uh this is from show em where you live this is one of my favorites called shagadelic boogaloo okay yeah. that's a fun one and uh right. oh i want to tell you my wife you know when we go traveling up to montreal she makes some mixtapes and this song is on one of the tapes so she's digging it too and a lot of people that's great like it um what was going on in the studio uh recording this well this was inspired by <laughs> by um austin powers actually okay, okay. just the, sort of the silliness of the of some of that 60s music but mixed in with our love for uh, booker t and the mgs and and just that that whole sort of 60s soul jazz sound but a little bit tongue in cheek so we came up with this with this tune called the Shagadelic Boogaloo. All right, we're going to get it in, right now. This is uh Vital Information from Show 'em Where You Live, Shagadelic. Okay, and that is music from Vital Information, the Shagadag Shagadelic Boogaloo from Show 'em Where You Live and we welcome the man who composed that along with his friends. Uh Tom Costner wrote that one actually, right? Yeah, that's right. Tom was home hard at work one day. Okay. Came up with came up with that piece. <laughs> and uh you guys I assume you do that one live, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, we don't play every every night the same songs, but we've we've been playing that one quite a bit. So so, so your band I, I know you've been together a, uh quite a while, but when you go out to play, how, how do you compose a set list or are you just calling out song titles and going right into it? No, we usually figure out ahead of time what we're going to do, though Though it can change, but we figure out, and it depends on the situation, whether we're playing two shows for two different audiences or two sets for the same audience or one long set or whatever. So we have, we have some tunes that we like to play every night, and then there's other variable ones. So you know, we usually just rough it out and figure it out ahead of time and then go do it. But there's... So much improvisation from night to night, even though we might even play the same set a couple of nights in a row. It's always pretty radically different. So we, we leave a lot of room for spontaneity and improvisation, even between the tunes. Mm -hmm. How about uh, for our, our drummers out there uh, who are listening very intently to the words of Steve Smith? <laughs> how, how about your preparation before, before a night? going on stage and then maybe talk a little bit about how you wind down physical is it wearing on you yeah it's it definitely um well i well i have to warm up before i go on stage i like to get on stage with my chops feeling really loose and in tune very highly tuned up so 
but I just have a practice pad, so sort of one of these little practice pads you strap onto your leg, and and uh, and I go anywhere from a half hour to forty five minutes before the set and just play. You thinking of you know, thinking of some of the tunes that I'm going to be playing, and then and then uh, warm up slowly that way. You can play my feet on the floor so everything gets going and gets warmed up. So by the time I get on stage, I'm feeling pretty loose. Mm-hmm. And then and there's no real warm down afterwards, so to speak. I just, um, you know, the show ends and just, you know, I, I, I play the show in the way that the, the music is designed. I, it's, there's a lot of ups and downs. So I really don't wear myself out that bad. And the, and the music has so much dynamics that, that I'm playing lightly, you know, half of the time, strong half the time. But, but it's not like, say, when I played with Journey and we played two hours of full on, you know, on 11 every song, just about, it seemed like, where I really beat myself up. It's a, it's a much different situation than that. So I'm not all that, all that worn out at the end of the night. Because it, it, it requires so much more subtlety to play this music that, that it's, uh, you know, it's uh, it's pretty balanced, pretty balanced set. And, and as far as journey, uh, any, any la- we did a record, and then we were supposed to do a tour, and it just never happened, never got off the ground, and uh, which is the subject of a pretty dreadful VH1 behind the music. Oh, right. I did catch some of that. Yeah. <laughs> there's a one-hour version of it. I think it's just horrible. But then there's an hour-and-a-half version called the Director's Cut that's quite a bit better. tells right. the story in a much more complete way. But um, once that happened, that that tour never happened, the, the, the guy, uh, especially Neil and Jonathan, they wanted to continue on and get a new singer and at that point, that just didn't hold any interest for me. I already had so many other projects going, but, you know, mainly vital information and all the other projects that I just let it go and just said um, I wasn't interested in that. I mean, right. if someday it comes up that Steve Perry does want to do a, a reunion tour, you know, I would consider that, definitely consider that. And But the way they are working, they this is their full-time job, and... I really just have other things I want to do besides that as a full-time job. Yeah, I, they make a lot more money yeah. than I do, but <laughs> but you know at this right. at this point I'm, I'm I want to, there's certain things musically that I want to do regardless of the fact that um, I'd make a lot more money playing with Journey than what I'm doing. My special guest right now is drummer, fantastic musician, and and always a great guest here to the Upper Room, Steve Smith. You can go right now to vitalinformation.com uh, and get all the information on the releases. And uh, Steve Smith comes out with something just about every six months. Plenty of tour dates. He's coming to uh, New York City on Thursday at the bottom line in New York City in Greenwich Village. And then he'll be in Connecticut, at Vernon, Connecticut at the Colony on Tuesday night, April 9th. And then there'll be a drum clinic on Saturday April 13th at Western Connecticut State University, about 40 minutes, and that's uh, sponsored by the Percussive Art Society. Um, what happens at the, at the drum clinics when you go over there? Well, the Percussive Art Society puts on events around the country, and this is what you'd call their local chapter. There's an, there, there's a, every November there's a, um, a get-together that uh, takes three days, and it's usually held in... You know, one city, say it was, I think it was in Texas, somewhere in Texas last year, and these are like these marathon three-day events. But then, uh, then they have the local chapters have days of percussion um, once a year, and so what you'll experience if you attend one of these is everything from clinics and performance on timpani and marimba to marching drum to drum sets and you know hand drums all kinds of percussion so so i go and and i'll do a one hour demonstration clinic performance whatever you call it um for for the the, uh people that are interested in that and i know greg bissonette will be there and uh, 
there's probably going to be so many other people that I don't even know. I know Greg's going to be there because he actually came to to my gig when we played in L.A. a couple weeks ago and and said that he was he was going to see me there. So that'll be those are always fun, really fun events. And the only thing is, you have to be a member of PAS to go to one of these. But I think if you you could probably sign up and and become a member pretty easily if you if you're so inclined. Do you find a lot of the young uh, folks getting into uh, playing live instruments and developing their craft? Yeah, the the you know the drum as is such a physical instrument that I don't think it'll ever go the way of say keyboards has that the the electronic keyboards have have really become very popular probably more so in, in many ways than the acoustic piano itself drums being so physical there's there's just no substitute for hitting a drum with a stick or or or, or with a, with your hand and the whole feeling and the and visceral experience of the thing is is uh, pretty strong, so it's it's a growing community. There's still a lot of people playing drums, and the hand drum um, experience, the people playing hand drums, has really grown quite fast in this country now, which is pretty interesting. Pretty interesting to see that. Now, when you're traveling uh, on this current tour, um, how about your drum kit? What, what are you bringing along for this current tour? Well, it's a similar kit that I've been using for the last few years. One bass drum, 20-inch bass drum, and then three rack toms and two floor toms and, I don't know, about six or so cymbals. So it's a fairly large setup. Two snare drums. I just added a little mini snare drum to my setup, an auxiliary snare drum. So it's uh, it's ever-expanding. I brought the little one in because we're doing some music that's like the drum and bass sound that requires a real high pitch snare drum because on those on the original on the drum and bass music it's they take tracks and they speed up the drums so they sound real small so we're doing some of that in the music so so this the kit has expanded slightly so if you run into a technical uh problem along the way and you need to get to a, a music shop you pretty easy go on the road um, yeah, but I actually don't, I carry a bunch of extra things with me from spare heads to a few spare parts and carry an extra bass drum pedal, extra hi-hat stand, all this stuff, the, the things that, that could break down. So hopefully I won't be having to go visit the local music store. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, also we should uh, make mention that a great CD, uh, was released, uh, last year, but you can go to vitalinformation.com and uh, find out how you can pick up the whole catalog, vital information, show them where you live. And Steve Smith is uh, on tour right now with his his great band, Tom Costner, Baron Brown, and Frank Gambale. And, okay, we talked about you're always looking for, for new challenges out there, music-wise. How, how about some of the people you'd like to spend a couple weeks in the studio with if, if, you, if you had time and they had time? Well, I mean, I guess... One of the players that I've never played with that I just love to play with is John McLaughlin. Just still have not played with him, so that would be he's he's on my wish list. Right. Wayne Shorter would be up there. That that would be a fantastic experience. So, and uh, I got close to putting a group together with a I I think would be a great trio, but it just just didn't happen. Was uh, Borelli Legren and Jeff Berlin. We tried to do the the great French guitar player, and maybe he's not that well known here, but very well known in Europe. And Jeff Berlin, who's just an incredible bass player. But um, so it never happened, was, right? Yeah, that one didn't happen. No, <laughs> but but we're gonna. I'm gonna keep trying. You know, you know, I'm I got a lot of ideas. So so we just we we try one, and it doesn't work, and try another one. So I'm sure there there's ample time to get something together. And uh, Steve Smith, as always, what, what do you like to do when, uh, before we head off with some of your music? What do you like to do when you, you put the drumsticks down and, and kick back at home? Well, that doesn't happen too often. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> 
spending time with my girlfriend. I, you know, just love that. Just mm-hmm. And whatever we do, whether we just go out to dinner, go to the movies, go for a walk, and and uh, you know, we it's read a book, or just you know, spending some some nice, quiet, relaxed time doing that. That's we sort of, you know, that I guess. And then I and I have two kids that are actually they're pretty old now. They're seventeen and twenty, <laughs> so okay. you know. And I like to spend as much time with them as I can as well. All right. So sounds, sounds like a great time, if you ever get yeah. that chance, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So before we get in, we're going to get into a couple cuts from Show Them Where You Live. But a uh, quick reminder, all the information is on vitalinformation.com. You can go uh, to that right now and uh, get all the information on the upcoming tour dates and, and releases. Uh, specifically in our area, New York City, Thursday night, the bottom line, West 4th Street, 15th West 4th Street, uh, right on the campus of NYU or thereabouts. And also, next Tuesday night, Vital Information with Steve Smith will be at the Colony, Vernon, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And if you are a uh, drummer, percussionist, you can sign up with the Percussive Arts Society. The Connecticut Chapter Day is being held on Saturday, April 13th at Western Connecticut State University in Danbury, Connecticut. So much thanks to you, Steve, for uh, spending time with the Upper Room with Joe Kelly on your, on your rare off day. You know, thanks, Joe. Yeah. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. And I hope you get to... You, you might go to see Santana tonight? Uh, yeah, it could be. Uh-huh. I mean, they're, they, we talked to Dennis. His family's coming, so he's pretty pretty uh, strapped for tickets at this point. But um, if, you know, we may we may make it, or a right. couple of the guys may make it. We'll, we'll see. We so. had a, a good time. Last night we played in Charlottesville, Virginia. Okay. And the home of the Dave Matthews Band, and uh, Carter Beaufort came down to the gig. Oh, so wow. Got to hang with Carter. Oh, that, that has to be great when you meet your Yeah, yeah. that was a really good time. So uh, it's always nice when the people come out and support the music like right. that. You know, the our peers, the, the people that, that we also are inspired by. So it was great that he took some time and came down to say hi and hang out. Okay, Steve, thanks so much. And let's see, we're going to take you out with uh, Cat and Mouse. Followed, Cat and Mouse. Right. Followed uh, by Soul Principal. All right, two good ones. And we, we usually play those tunes just about every night. So those are favorites that have actually greatly expanded since the uh, recorded versions. And this should prep them for the upcoming dates in our area. Thanks a lot, Steve. All right, Joe. Thank you.